on July 15th, the Dragonflight Death Knight talents were updated as well with the Wildhead DK talent calculator. With this update, better quality of life changes were made to the DK core talent tree as well as some changes to the Unholy Tree's RNG talents. I'm going to highlight some things from the Blizzard Blue Post talking about the changes. If you just want to see the talents, there are timestamps. If you don't know what Blue Posts are, they're official Blizzard Post. In the first paragraph you see that they've listened to some of the feedback from the community and the DK community as that they complained that the new core was too linear so that they added connections from the blood path to the unholy and frost paths. This is going to help a lot now that we don't have to waste 4 points on the right unholy side since all we really want from that side is perhaps the lichborn and death echo and holy bond. Also blizzard did some rearrangements to the core tree to fix dependency on some talents and help fix picking useless ones that you won't need. My experience with Unholy is minimum, but I'm going to try to go over some of the changes that they made to their talent tree. Remember, a lot of the stuff is not final, and it's spot on the change within the next coming months. First thing is that they want to fix some of the desync issues the spec has with its cooldowns, and they also want to fix some of its layouts, move some talents around. I remember Atlas saying in Max's video that the GCDs in the Unholy spec is annoying, also saying that the bottom half of the tree is a lot stronger than the top half of the tree. So I do hope they tackle this problem within the next coming months. Since we know the Unholy Tree is going to change, I'm not going to go over it in this video. I'm just going to go over the four separate Frost builds. Alright, time for Frost General Tree. Um, I've had to record this like eight times, so I'm just going to get it done quick. This uh, Mind Freeze, that's your interrupt, of course you want that. You got Permafrost, you got that Strike, you need to take that. You know, I, I would imagine this would be Baseline, but... Um, Anti-Magic Shell, uh, that's Advanced, Veteran of the Third War. You want to skip out on this right part of the tree because none of it's really useful. Um, Icebound Fortitude into uh, merciless, merciless Strikes into... Uh, assimilation, which is improved iceborne fortitude, aka it reduces the cooldown from three minutes to two minutes. Um, anti magic zone and wraith walk. You want to take runic empowerment, which causes your runes to have a chance to refund every time you spend a runic power. Then you want to go into suppression, which gives you 3% avoidance, just so we can go into this side of the tree. Uh, plus two percent strength. Then you have Lichborn. Uh, you could choose between Lichborn and Grip of the Dead whenever you need it, or not Grip of Death's Reach whenever you need it. And then um, here's a useless talent that we have to take. That's uh, that's useless talent number one. Um, and then here you have one choice. You gotta uh, uh actually we got three choices. So we gotta find three things to spend our points on. I pick Anti Magic Barrier, which increases uh, or de reduces the cooldown of Anti Magic Shell by 20 seconds and increases its duration and the amount absorbed by 40%. Pretty good. And then Anticipation and Blind Sleet are my three choices. For Mythic Plus, it may change depending on um, tuning or whatever. Uh, then you want to go into Death's Echo, Unholy Bond. And then, uh, not Soul Reaper. Then you want to go onto your left side of the tree. Then you want to get into Runic Attention, Icy Talons, Empowered Rune Weapon, Rune Mastery, and then Horn of Winter. So this is like your ideal uh, DK Mythic Plus tree slash rating. Uh, maybe in Mythic Plus you could probably actually trade these two out if you want to go more defensive. Uh, Will Necropolis is a Blood Decay talent. Um, damage taken both 30% health is reduced by 30%, so it can help you kind of sort of like a cheat death, but you I mean you can still die in it. And then if you're doing PvP, ideally you would want to sp spend more points onto this side. You want to get into Death's Reach, then you want to avoid taking this. Uh, actually, you kind of have to take it for this.
and he and typically you use the two-hander frost build for pvp or unholy but i won't be going over unholy in this video so this is the pvp build now on to the frost tree so let's go into frost strike whenever you, uh it's your runic power spender um with runic power mint it can uh gain runes back Obliterate as your rune spender and then hauling blast applies frost fever to everything um rhyme which uh increases the damage of hauling hauling blast it procs has a 45 percent chance to proc from obliterate um then killing machine your auto attack crits have a chance to proc killing machine which makes your next obliterate crit then you want to go into runic command um and then mimosa's winner so this is the build can change at around this point so for, so far this is all baseline all builds are going to want to go this um now the first build i'm going to show you is the mythic plus breath build with avalanche all right now on to chill streak it's actually crazy that we're getting this ability and just in the talent so what does it do Chill Streak costs 40 runic power and has a 45 second cooldown. Um, deals 81% uh, attack power. To put in perspective, Fallstorm's Fury is 321 uh, attack power. So 81% is actually pretty high for an ability. Uh, it deals 81% of attack power as frost damage. So obviously it's going to scale with mastery. If mastery stays stays the same, um, also reduces the target's movement speed by seventy percent for four seconds. It bounces up to nine times between targets uh, within six yards. Um, you definitely want to go this in Mythic Plus, yeah, and then you want to go into Enduring Chill. I'll talk about Piercing Chill Chill here in a second. Chill Streak's bounce range is increased by two yards. Each time Chill Streak bounces, it has a 20% chance to increase the maximum amount of bounces by one. If this is just, period. Slap a point in there. You want to take Enduring Chill in the Mythic Plus. Piercing Chill, on the other hand, um, enemies suffer 5% increased damage from uh, Chill Streak each time they are struck by it. So maybe in like a two-target cleave situation, uh, this could be better. But you want to go Enduring Chill. Um... Empowered Wound Weapon, you want your second charge of Empowered Wound Weapon, of course. Uh, I think all builds want this charge. So even if you're going Obliteration, uh, then you want to go into Abiding Cold, Gathering Storm, Frost Whelps, uh, Aid. This was a BFA... Yeah, this was a BFA Azerite trait. Um, you'd want this in both your Helm, Shoulders, and Chest back in BFA. Um, so what does Frost Whelps Aid do? Pillar of Frost summons a Frost Whelp who breathes on all your enemies within 40 yards in front of you, dealing 20% of your attack power. Frost Whelp's, uh, Frost dealing Frost damage, of course. Each unique unique enemy hit by Frost Whelp aid grants you 2% mastery for 15 seconds, up to 10%. You want to stack two points into this for that additional mastery. I think it's supposed to be 4% mastery, uh, but uh, it says only 2% for some reason. I think it's just something to do with the wildhead talent calculator then you want to put, go on into the left side of the tree you want to put some points into unleashed fear frenzy into a blue improved obliterate into rage of the frozen champion this is uh currently the raid legendary for frost dk's breath build um now back to the right side you want to go into everfrost which is essentially the talent or not the talent the conduit that DKs have uh, increases uh, Remorseless Winner's damage by 4% to enemies it hits, stacking up to 10 times. How it works in live, I believe, actually, I believe I know that it applies a debuff to the enemies, and then this debuff stacks as they get hit with Remorseless. The way they word it here, it sounds like it's going to be like Gathering Storm, where it's a buff on yourself where it deals that kind of damage, but we don't know yet. Uh, it's probably just going to work exactly the same as it does uh, in live. Then you want to go into Invigorating Freeze. Uh, Frost 
Frost Fever Critical Strikes increases the chance to grant runic power by 10 additional 10%. You mainly just want to take this. They go into this. You wouldn't take this otherwise if this wasn't behind it. Um, breath is the big cheese, big business, the beet and potatoes. You want to take this breath, and then you want to go into Frostworm's Fury, and then the CDR on Frostworm's Fury by 50% for result enemies hit for three seconds. Obviously, you get to use this every breath now instead of every other breath. All right, now going into the single target build. Uh, let me just... So this... Let's just take the points off of this area here. So in the single target build, you're going to want to go into Cold Heart, into Daring Strength, into Murder's Efficiency, into Biting Cold, so you can get the second charge of Empowered Wound Weapon. You want to get Bone Grinder, Consuming Killing Machine grants a 1% crit strike. For 20 seconds, stacking up 5 times at 5 stacks, your next clean machine consumes the stack and grants you 10% increased frost damage for 10 seconds. Always good. And then enduring strength, when our pillar of frost expires, your strength is increased by 10% for 6 seconds. This effect lasts 2 seconds longer for each obliterate critical strike during breath. God, that was a breather. Holy fuck. Um, you don't really need gathering storm in single target or chill streak. Because uh, if it's single target, Chill Streak isn't going to bounce in Gathering Storm. I mean, you might. If you have an extra point after this, maybe. Um, into Invigorating Freeze, into Breath of Sindragosa, into one point, into Frostman's Fever. You don't want to take the CDR. How many points we got? We got one point. One singular point left. Let me think. All right, yeah. We, we would take Gathering Storm then. So we got Bone Grinder, we got Enduring Strength, which are the two main ones here. Born a Winner. Yeah, you're going to have super long breaths, by the way, with Murse Efficiency, Runica Tunstein, Born of Winner. You're going to have, your breaths are going to last at least two to three minutes. Holy, holy smoke. All right, now time to go into the more depressing side of this build. If you are a two-hander Giga Chad, it's going to be a bad expansion for you. They did, they said, fuck you, we're not going to give you anything, we're going to give you no attention. That's essentially what they said when they made this uh, two-hander build. So you want to go down to this point, Killing Machine, Rhyme, into Improved Frost Strike, and Remorseless Winter, um, Pillar of Frost, Unleashed Frenzy, into Improved Obliterate, into Frigid Executioner, which Obliterate deals to... This is just the legendary effect. Um, Obliterate deals... 10% increased damage and has a 12% chance to refund two runes. <clears throat> Obviously, you'd want that. Um, now, going back to the main tree, actually. Given that the 200 build is kind of seen as a PvP off spec kind of thing. Um, let's just go back to this point. Uh, to go and take Abomination's Limb. Let me see here. You want two points into this. All right. Uh, and then Death Reach. Uh, probably swap between this, depending if the enemy team has a fear or not. And then Improved Death Strike. And Bomb Limb into Icy Talons into Empowered Wind Weapon. You have two points left. Let me see what is good to spend. Maybe you could get Death's Echo. No. You want... uh. You probably want anti magic barrier for the defensive horn of winter. All right. Now, going back to the frost side, let's just go into improved rhyme, into chill streak. Um, this is going to be PvP, of course. I'm not going to even try to attempt to do a PvE build for these guys. Um, into improved killing machine. Uh, your next obliterate deals frost damage, might of the frozen waste, which should straight up just be baseline. I don't know why they made this a talent. It makes zero sense, but I guess just gonna have to deal with it. Murder sufficiency into bone grinder, which we talked about previously, into cold heart, into enduring strength, into cold blooded rage, into obliteration. Cold blood, blood rage. Your frost strike has a twenty percent chance to grant uh to grant 
killing machine, which just makes this pretty much the reason why I put the two points in here instead of here. Um, because you're going to be pressing Frost Strike more often, it seems, into the one point into Frost Storm's Fury into Absolute Zero. Um, does this still give you Rhyme? Okay, I thought that was a legendary effect. Okay, so this still will give you Rhyme every six seconds. Maybe you can go Avalanche because your combo is a blit is Avalanche Obliterate. I mean, a Howling Blast Obliterate, Howling Blast Obliterate, Howling Blast Obliterate with the Obliteration build. The two handed obliteration build. No, uh, I think this is this is the best you can do. If you're gonna do PvP, I mean maybe you'd go piercing chill. These seem don't seem pretty useless. This is not gonna help you. The only thing I'd take over here is maybe like one point off here. And then maybe get oops, avalanche. But I don't see why you would do that. Maybe because you, you'd be missing out on a freeze. And then the CDR will line up better with your pillar. So what I think you're going to do as a two-hander build, your combo. You're going to start out with, you know, your normal pillar with your first charge of rune weapon to, like, bait out CDs. And then your second pillar, you're going to use Ambom Limb. Your second, uh, your pillar, Ambom Limb. Your second uh, charge wound weapon. And then your dragon. I think that's the gameplay style they're imagining. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, if you don't win by your second charge, I'm, I'm assuming they say, fuck it, you're screwed. Because, uh, I mean, I guess your your first charge should be coming off cooldown by then, but... Yeah, this is the two-hander build. You're just going to have to deal with it. Sadly, Blizzard said fuck you when they, when they designed it. So... Alright, the most hated build that Frost has ever had, Frost Scythe. A lot of controversies with this build. Um, this was the main build back in, I think, most of BFA Season 3 especially season three with the frost up stacks um so frost strike obliterate howling blast rhyme killing machine uh we all know these remorseless winner into um maybe you don't have to go over the command yeah fuck it we're gonna go over the command for the 10 rank uh 10 additional maximum runic power you want both avalanche and exegrable oh my god However you say that, Exalt, you want Enduring Strength, um, you want Frost Whelps Aid, you want Improved Rhyme, you want Chill Streak, you want Empowered Rune Weapon, you want Biting Cold, Gathering Storm, Frost Scythe, which is the big cheese of this build, you want Everfrost, Bone Grinder, Cold Blooded uh, Rage, into Ice Cap, into Frost Worms Fury. That is the whole Frost Scythe build. Uh, essentially just spam Frost Scythe all day. Maybe you could sacrifice Gathering Storm for Enduring Chill, depending on whichever one does more damage. But I think the base Chill Shriek is good enough. Because uh, without... Um, if you put a point in that, you probably would have to sacrifice a point from either side, which is not bueno. Not a very bueno. That's the end of this video. If you enjoyed watching, I'd appreciate it if you left a like. It's up to you. And if you have any opinions or questions, check the comments down below. I know the topic of New Talents will create a hot discussion. And if you're interested in live streams, I will be live streaming on July 26th through the 30th from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. Central on twitch.tv slash arc1g. As always, see you soon.